Nobody in this town has a TV aerial. This is Dunford Bridge, a remote hamlet in the civil parish of Dunford in Barnsley, South Yorkshire. It lies in the Peak District, 5 miles west of Penniston and 5 miles south of Homeforth. The settlement, consisting of just a few houses, lies beneath the Windscar Reservoir, a compensation reservoir on the headwaters of the River Don. The eastern end of the now disused Woodhead Rail Tunnel is in the centre of the village. The site of the former railway station is now a parking area, with the old rail line forming the route of the Transpennine Trail. But while I love a disused railway on the channel, I'm here for an even nerdier reason today. Why don't these houses have television aerials? There's less than 20 houses in Dunford Bridge. None of them have TV aerials. This one does, and it's a major clue in today's venture. I was first drawn to investigating the state of television transmissions in the village when I saw a post online where Dan, armed with an old IBA map and not much more, tried to investigate the elusive Dunford Bridge self-help relay without much success. The weather was terrible when he visited, and there's nothing online in the way of information. I like a challenge, and so I've come to Dunford Bridge today to investigate for myself, and I've managed to uncover a bit more information. Today isn't much better than when Dan came. It's dull, frosty and cold, damp, and there's nobody around. In fact, I've seen more alpacas than people. You see, Dunford Bridge is in an awkward spot for, well, anything. They were still using dial-up with virtually no internet access into the 2010s. When that ended, residents were left without internet until an abandoned fibre scheme led to super-fast South Yorkshire bringing fibre to the area. Now they have super-fast internet. In the 1980s, they could barely receive any television signals. That was until a pub landlord decided to set up a self-help relay. Self-help relays are used by communities to receive television signals in areas where reception is very poor or unavailable. They're often funded by communities and consist of smaller antennas designed to rebroadcast signals from elsewhere. A great example would be here at Old Trafford Stadium, the home of Manchester United Football Club. The stadium itself blocks this residential street from receiving television pictures from Winter Hill, so this antenna on the roof receives the signals from Winter Hill and this panel array rebroadcasts them out at low power to the houses hidden in the shadow of the stadium. The same principle applied at Dunford Bridge, but instead of a stadium creating an RF shadow, the surrounding terrain does. The residents of Dunford Bridge discovered for the first time that not all their favourite TV shows were set in a bleak wintry landscape in November 1985. Because of its position in the Pennines, the tiny village had always had extremely poor television reception, with most households complaining of snowy rolling pictures on their screen that resembled a bleak snowstorm. But for one week a special display was put on at the Stanhope Arms pub in the village, which has now been converted into a residential building. The demo was mounted by Penniston company Frank Platt Electrical Limited, along with teleaerials. They showed how the latest in TV technology could bring the perfect television picture into every home in Dunford Bridge. It included a special antenna that would bring good reception to the village, while an extensive display of new satellite equipment showed how even a village as remote as Dunford Bridge would be able to pick up high quality images from TV stations around the world. Reception for most people in the village was marred by the nearby Windscar Reservoir and surrounding hillsides, which affected the signal and caused pictures to break up. Broadcasting authorities wouldn't supply relay transmitters to communities of less than 400 houses which had poor television reception. Emily Moore Transmitting Station is just over 8 miles away to the northeast and should in theory have been able to provide signals to Dunford Bridge, but it just couldn't. Instead, residents were receiving poor quality signals from Belmont Transmitting Station 67 miles away to the southeast. You can see the top of Emily Moore from 100 metres above Dunford Bridge, but down at ground level you've no chance. You can see how this peak right next to the village blocks the signals from Emily Moor. The high ground over towards Penniston creates a similar issue by blocking signals from Belmont. Edric Foster was the landlord at the Stanhope Arms and he decided at the end of November 1985 to help solve the village's long-standing television reception problems by organising trials of a system used in some of the most remote and small communities in Britain. He had an antenna erected on a hillside adjacent to the pub which was owned by a farmer and a booster system fitted at the pub to guarantee perfect pictures on all four channels. The booster ended the problems of ghosting and picture breakup on the small screens of the village's 17 other households. He paid for the relay system and asked the pub brewery, the parish council and Barnsley District Council to help fund the venture which cost £1,260. 
Eventually, the villagers raised the money to pay for the system and agreed to pay rent to the owner of the field for using his land. The booster was controlled at the pub but never switched off. An extensive survey was conducted to decide where best to place the receive antenna and this field next door to the Stanhope Arms was chosen. The system picked up signals from Emily Moore using an antenna on an 8 foot mast mounted on the hillside and carried them by cable to the Stanhope Arms where they were retransmitted to the 17 houses in the village. The main target in the location where most of the houses were was Don View and the relay created a nice radiation pattern in the direction of the homes. The approved arrangement here was for two antennas on bearing 0 and 290. The height was not to exceed 15 metres above ground level and vertical polarisation was to be used. TV antennas on the houses were aligned with the Stanhope Arms pub and there's just one left in the village on this bungalow, still pointing towards the pub. There are brackets on some other properties which are now empty but you can see vertically polarised antennas in Google Earth historic imagery all pointing towards the Stanhope Arms. The villagers got a chance to put the reception of their own television transmitter to the ultimate test by watching their village on TV in August 1986. Yorkshire Television filmed the TV relay system for a feature on the calendar programme but unfortunately it doesn't seem to have been digitised. In December 1987, Yorkshire Rural Community Council ran a competition called South and West Yorkshire Village Ventures which was sponsored by Shell UK. Eileen Fennell presented Edward Hurst, Joyce Carter and Edric Foster with a certificate and £150 after their TV booster station won a prize in the competition. The relay ran without a hitch until December 1992. A dispute blew up between Edric Foster and the landowner of the field the receive antenna was installed in. This led to the dismantling of the antenna and mast. After the relay was taken down, I was led to believe that the houses used some sort of dish pointed towards a central hub in the village, another relay, but I couldn't find any evidence of this. I spoke to one resident who I bumped into at a bus stop, and he told me that everyone switched to satellite after the relay was disbanded, which is evident by the amount of satellite dishes visible. The mystery sort of deepened slightly however. In a mid-2000s Ofcom document, you can clearly see a self-help relay listed at Dunford Bridge. It's relay number 321, a pre-digital switchover relay. In the current version of the document, post-digital switchover, there's no such relay listed for Dunford Bridge. Was there an interim relay installed between the dismantling of the original one and the digital switchover? I've spoken to a few IBA and Archiva guys who couldn't find any information. The residents I spoke to didn't mention anything like this, so I just don't know. And so, our journey ends here in Dunford Bridge. Interestingly, a couple of miles to the west, a helicopter was winching earth to some works that were taking place on the tops, which made for great viewing. 